You said when Michael Moore passed away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You were investigated for his mm -hmm. murder. Right. What happened and what was the outcome okay, of, that so of that situation? I'm sorry. I was the personal representative. In the meantime, from the hospital incident to the time he died, right. we, we went and got Maximus. We got back home. Everything was great. Right. He made me power attorney of his medical and his financials. Okay. We sat down. We did a will. We had my mom, myself, or my daughter, and John, his our insurance agent. Okay. They all signed it with Neva. As witnesses. Right. And right. he notarized it. Okay. Miss was at school that day. But we had called him in the room the night before when we were writing it. And Maximus, who do you, what do you want? If something happens to your dad, where do you want to live? You can stay here with Judy in the house in Arizona. Right. Or you can go back with your mom in California. Okay. You decide. Oh, no, dad. I don't want to go to California. I want to stay with Judy. Right. So Michael writes in his will. Judy's to get full, full custody of my son. So that night that he passed, I, I couldn't think, let alone find the will. And it was not a priority to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So they had to notify the next of kin because they didn't know. I couldn't produce a will. Absolutely. Okay. So they had to notify his dad. So his dad tells the investigator. This is yeah, Michael's. This is Michael Moore's father. Correct. Okay, gotcha. James Moore. He says, get my son out of that house away from that white bitch. Oh, wow. And the investigator says, you do understand if we take him from the house, he'll go to Child Protective Services. He'll be in the system. Oh, you mean the grandson he meant? Mm -hmm. Take the grand, take uh, Maximus out of the house away right. from you. Okay, gotcha. Exactly. So they had no choice. That's what he said he wanted. Yeah, they had no. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, based on what they understood. Right. 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 So John, which came out of nowhere, I never expected it in a million years. He's like, you can't do that. She is the only thing that that child knows for 12 years or, you know, since seven years since kindergarten. Right. And his dad passed away and you're going to take him away from that. Right. And he said, well, we, we don't have a choice. We have to. Absolutely. So he went around the room. He hugged my mom, my sister, you know, everybody in the room, which was all my family. Right. And he was fine. But he was he was just like his dad. Very strong. Kept it together. Not one tear. And before he left, I said, do you want to go with me to see your dad before you go? And where is what? So, so Michael Moore, his body is still in the house. His body's still in the house. Upstairs? Well, we, well, yeah, because the downstairs was our gym. Right, right. So and upstairs in the bedroom. He was still upstairs. Right, he was still in the master. Okay, gotcha. I'm on a gurney in the body bag, but they didn't oh. zip. They didn't wow. have a zip. They didn't well, have a zip. Up, up to like his chest. Okay? okay. Wow. They let us go back and say goodbye. Okay. So Maximus and I went back together and we're holding hands. He stands on one side and I stand on the other. Right. And I broke down. I just totally lost it. And Max just stood there. He didn't, you know, he, he was so young. He really didn't know what to do. Right. Absolutely. But yeah. he didn't want to see his dad. Right. So he came over to console me. Okay. So I kissed Michael on his cheek, told him I loved him. And he cried a tear of blood. One tear. Wow. And Max just went. 
I mean, we both just stood there like, what the hell was that? You know? And I just lost it. Totally lost it. Like I'm about ready to do now. So I didn't want to let go. And they, the, the guys that were there had to take me off of him. Wow. So, so when did they, when did they get to the part when they started to investigate you? Okay. For, the, so, for, the, for that situation. Okay. So they took him away. It took six months to get the coroner's report. Okay. So I get a phone call one afternoon and I had already became the personal representative. I was already taking care of everything. No one contacted me from the family. Nobody wanted anything. Had you put, had you produced the will at this time? Yeah. I had to turn in everything. Okay. You had to turn in everything. Right. So, so when the police, did the police contact you? I mean, how, how did that work? Investigators contacted me one afternoon and he said to me, this is John Flanagan, investigator Flanagan. Right. I am the investigator for Michael Moore's death. Okay. He said, I need to talk to you about the coroner's report. Oh, wow. And he said, um, you can come to my office. I can come to your home. Or if you feel better, we can meet at a neutral location, like a Starbucks or something. Right. I said, no, I have no problem with you coming here. I have nothing to hide. Right. So I called my attorney and just let him know. And he goes, Judy, don't say a word. Make him come here. Right. I said, no, I'm not, Tom. Because I am not paying you $250 an hour to know what you already know. I have nothing to hide. Absolutely. So he was so pissed off at me, but I didn't care. So he arrived. He sat down at my dining room table and we talked for a good two hours. Okay. And he said to me, well, explain to me why Maximus called 911. I said, don't patronize me. Don't talk down to me. You will respect me in my home. And don't sit there and pretend as if you did not listen to that 911 tape. If you don't know the difference between a grown ass woman and a 12 year old little boy's voice, and you're going to sit there and, and pretend like you don't, we're done. Right. He goes, okay. He goes, I need to ask you. Did you call 911? I said, you already know the answer to that question. He goes, I need to hear you say it. I said, yes, I called 911. Are we done? It's two hours. Then he says to me, well, we found methadone in Michael's system, and he was not prescribed methadone. Right. I said, I was prescribed methadone. Well, we took a picture of your pills and yours were on, on the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink top. Like they, like they were large to small bottles. I had them in like, I'm so OCD. The biggest one to the smallest one. Okay. And we have pictures of them. We also have pictures of the inside of the safe where Michael kept our pills normally. And some of your extra ones were in there as well. Right, right. I said, yeah, because I take them as I need them. Right. And like some people take them as they're directed. I don't like walking around like a zombie. Right. And I suck it up as long as I can. So I can't take it anymore. Absolutely. So my count would never be right. Okay. Because we, you know, when the you count to, on your the count on your pills, you mean on the pills. When you go right. to pain, your your count has to match the number of days in the, in the month. Okay, got you. Oh, I see. You're in specimen. Right. You know, right. That, that, that other stuff. So we were seeing the same doctor. And Michael would go to the pharmacy to Walgreens. Right. Our medication together. Okay. So he spe- so the officer basically says that uh, Michael had methadone in his system. Right. And basically he didn't he wasn't prescribed methadone. You were right. prescribed methadone. So mm-hmm. basically he's thinking that you gave Michael or put something, put methadone in something that he had. That- well, see, that's what I didn't get. Okay. Because I took it as I gave it to him. But then when I did an interview with someone else, I forget who it was, it was so long ago. Right. Then the things that people commented 
just blew me away because so, so basically no so what i'm trying to get to is the gist okay. of the gist of of what happened in that process so right. how did that how did the summation of that come up well what was the the uh the the result of this investigation in regards to you well he said that um he was getting 50 emails a day from the family about me okay and that they they felt that i had given him the methadone right and i said well how would i have done that because michael did what he wanted to do with who he wanted to do it when he wanted to do it because he wanted to do it right nobody could change his mind okay so so basically what was so if what I was the what was the what was the result of the investigation? Right. When I told him that Michael went to the pharmacy and picked our medication up together, right? He said, "So you mean to tell me he went to the pharmacy to your house with the medicine alone?" Well, yeah. If I wasn't with him, yeah, right, absolutely. It never made a difference to me because it got home to me, right? And like I said, my ne- my account would always be off anyway. Okay. I didn't take them enough. Right. Because I didn't like to be that whacked out. Absolutely. So he starts asking me other questions that I felt were extremely inappropriate. Right. And he said, I said, we're done. He goes, well, you need to answer the questions. I said, no, I don't. He said, yes, you do. And if you don't answer them here, you can answer them at the station. I said, I'm not going to sit here and answer one question about our sex life. Okay. Okay. You've asked me enough questions and I told you three times now we're done. It's my turn. Number one, did you finally get your marks on his neck? No. Was there bruising on his neck? No. Was his esophagus, his voice box or his larynx swollen? Right. No. Were there any fingerprints, any bruising on his neck? No. I said, okay, you just answered four questions and they were all no. Why are you asking me this question? Right. Because apparently I was the only one that was doing it right. I didn't have to choke him. Okay. So, so, so what happened? Basically what happened? I mean, well, quite honestly, it was quite bizarre. We get to the front door. He's ready to leave now. So this is after a four hour conversation oh, after, or, or should I say interrogation? Exactly. Right. Okay. Here's the thing. He said he wanted to talk to me about the coroner's report. Okay. That was right. Absolutely. So I had no idea at this point. That's not what it was. Ah. Uh-huh. So we get to the front door. So he basically lied. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. So we get to the front door and he goes, is anyone here? I said, no. He goes, do you have a radio on? No. I said, wait a minute. Why do I hear my voice? Why, why am I listening to my own voice? Where is that coming from? He pulls the tape recorder out of his pocket. Oh, wow. And I go, were you recording our conversation? He said, oh, yeah. All murder investigations are recorded. I go, what? Wow. You have to notify me. You have to tell me that you're recording me. No, I don't. I no, by, by, yeah, by law, by law, he doesn't have to tell you. But I just what? find it ironic that he lied. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. He didn't even say, I'm, I'm coming to investigate you for murder. I would have had my attorney there. Absolutely. Not that I needed him, but I would have felt more comfortable with the situation. Absolutely. So he told he so he basically was investigating you for the murder of Michael Moore. Exactly. Wow. Because he had and I calculated it. I got I got a cop. I didn't get a copy prior to his arrival. Right. But I did get a copy in a the copy, mail. A copy of what? The coroner's report? OK, and gotcha. I sat down and my niece is a personal uh, a nurse practitioner. Okay. So I called her and we broke, well, she broke it down. I wasn't, I'm not good at math. And um, he had one pill based on his body weight and how we calculated it. How they calculate, okay. The dosage of one pill. Right. 
The rest were all his. Wow. And he had one hell of a cocktail. Okay. So basically, Michael Moore died from an accidental overdose. Right. Of opioid pills. Okay. Got you. So mm-hmm. no, I'm I'm glad I'm glad we were able to to cover that in so right. we could we could we could help like the public understand because like I said, Michael Moore, a lot of people talk about him in relation to the death row situation as and as I asked you in the beginning in regards to um how he passed away. But I wanna I wanna I wanna slide to the to the, the so what was what was because there was a lot of conversation between Michael Moore and Frank Alexander, right? Oh yeah. So so what was Michael Moore's and Frank? But let me Al- clarify one thing for you. OK, go ahead. Like I said, Michael was very strong, very, you know, difficult. Right. But I loved him. That didn't Absolutely. change a thing. Right. But the things that people were saying were just so cruel and so evil and things that I would have never, ever in a million years thought of. They they accused me of putting it in his food and putting it in his drinks. And, and I mean, people came up with some crazy shit. Right. Of how I killed him. Right. With the drugs and the overdose. Absolutely. And the kicker was Michael was actually addicted to his medication, but he was functioning properly. So I had no clue. Absolutely. Okay. No, I mean, I, that, that's not, that's not, but, that's not uncommon though. <laughs> well, it is to me. Okay. But I'm saying, and I've never yeah. experienced anything like that, but yeah. my brother had passed away two years prior to Michael okay. the same way. And my brother was not functionable. Right. So I would have never thought that Michael was uh, dr- hooked on his drugs. Okay. And the things that people were saying were so far fetched. How I but, well, basically, well, well, basically, people when they don't know what they do is they speculate, and well, yeah, it makes but, it makes for a great it makes it for a great so, conversation. And it was crazy because I was like, "Well, you know so much about that. How do I know it wasn't you that did it? I mean, the things that they were saying were so bizarre and twisted. It was sickening. So basically, the the summation of it was that right. they found out that you had nothing to do with it, right? Okay. I, I, I mean, no, I'm saying, I mean, I basically mean, basically, that's the that's the gist of it. That you're the outcome. Here, yes, that yeah, was the outcome. Because you're, you're sitting here talking to me. We have Judy Lukowski, uh, Michael Moore's fiance, Tupac's bodyguard. Um, like I said, thank you for coming on the show, uh, a straight game TV and clearing up all of the rumors, the lies and giving us an in-depth personal view into who Michael Moore was, how he passed away. But most importantly, I want to thank you for your time, you know, and it's your boy Delray. Straight game.